Hello everyone and welcome to another video. Today we're going to be talking about how to deal with the Abbasid dynasty in the different forms that we often see them doing super greedy stuff or playing mass camels. So I'm going to be showing you two games today on how to beat them. Basically what we're going to be doing is we're going to be first taking a look at a game with Delhi versus Abbasid and we're going to talk a little bit about how you can do aggression versus Abbasid on a 1TC basis, and then we're going to talk about afterwards how you can do fast castle against them. And the reason I'm not going to show you how to actually boom versus them is because that's the last thing you actually want to do. So this is more like a Civ strategy guide, how to actually counter them. Um, again, this is like playing against most Civs, but the Civ is quite strong right now, in many opinions, uh, in many people's opinions, so I figured it would be a good idea to talk a little bit about how to deal with them. I've been maining Abbasid myself for a very long time, and I've been playing 2GC Military Wing. And I've always said that they're very good. They're very strong Civ that can get a lot of tempo early, and that allows you to do a lot of stuff like adding a second TC for free, tempo-wise, and you still being able to catch up on, on, on castle ages and, and aggression and so on. The worst things that can happen to Abbasid players is opponents that do not go cavalry, the opponents that play infantry, because most of the strengths for Abbasid lie in their anti-cav. Their phalanx spears, their camel archers are all incredibly strong against uh, players that go for cavalry and modern arm type units. So those are the two things you actually kind of want to avoid when you play against this Civ. It is usually way better to play something like uh, Lancers or Knights if you're in Castle together with Archers, or if you're in the Feudal Age to play something like Spear Archer because those units are not countered and you can often mass a lot more of those units on a simpler economy such as a, wood, a food economy with Spears and Archers. So Delhi naturally fits that role quite easily like that's a niche that they're very very good at whether you're playing dome of faith or if you're playing tower of victory and so this is not exactly a guide to how to play delhi i've done a bunch of those so you can check those out but this is an example of how delhi can be extremely good at countering abbasid and why uh, that is is simply just because of the production because of the amount of units that they can pump out and because they have landmarks and bonuses that just apply really well on a lengthier feudal basis so you can stay in feudal age for longer without having to do farms all of those things in this game basically i'm going for my dome of faith build that i released recently and i'm just going to go for some aggressive scouting i've checked out what my opponent's doing and i'm now going to do that again most abbasid players they will age up at about four minutes and you want to figure out okay are they going to go for ecoing or are they going to go for military wing? Most people don't go trade or culture, and if they do, you can just play aggression. It's quite simple that way. If they're going to go military wing, they're going to spawn with two spears, two archers. The way you deal with that is simply by making an archer range and then creating three archers yourself. That allows you to do whatever you wanted to do initially. So if you wanted to go fast castle, three archers, you're good to go. You cannot actually make towers against that because if you make a tower against those early military units, the opponent that's playing opposite can just go for ramps. And if they go for ramps, that tower is not going to stay up for long and you're going to have full denied your gold. So rather, you want what you want to do is actually stick to the three archer opener. Here, our opponent's not doing that. Our opponent's doing ecoing, presumably at this stage because I haven't seen the House of Wisdom yet. But we can see that he's gathering stone. And so we're going to assume that he's going to go for at least two town centers. Now you can check that by simply clicking on the enemy stone. And then you can see how much stone they've gathered. About 900 for one TC. And then another, I think 265 or 245 or something uh, more stone. And you should uh, know that it's going to be a third TC. So here you can see they're going for this tech here. Fertile Crescent. If you want to make sure that um, they're going for Fertile Crescent or uh, any other upgrade that costs 75 gold on top of the... Um, the initial one that you get from your mill, uh, you will be able to see they've gathered 150 gold. So don't think that's a wheelbarrow. That's always going to be a reduction on villager cost. That's 75 gold. And if they've got ecoing, that's the fertile crescent that gives them reduction on eco buildings as well. So that's another 75 gold. So 150 gold is what they need to be able to go for a very effective second TC setup. And that's usually uh, the case with most Abbasid openers. Some Abbasid players go for extra 35 gold for spears. So again, you can watch that gold and just take a look at that. Then you know sort of what's happening if you are not quite sure. For us, 
what we're doing is we're opening up with the archer range here because we didn't know if he had gone for the military wing. So we went archers first, and now we know there are no military wing units. Cool. What we can do is we can leverage this early tempo advantage we have where they're building second TCs to go out and get our own advantage. You can set up your trade if you're playing Mongols. You can set your, uh, your sites for fast castle if you're a fast castle civ. If you're playing Delhi, you can go out and you can start um, walling in the sacred sites if you want to do that. You can also go and poke a little bit at their stone to deny that third TC. That's what they're doing. Another thing you can do is you can start spreading out the deer. This is incredibly good to do as well if you want to make sure that if they go out on the map for food, then they're going to spend more resources trying to cover a larger area with the fences or um, just in general drop off points. And so there are things that you can do here in the early game when you don't have a lot of units that make a greater impact on your aggression later on. And so in this replay, we're obviously taking a look at a replay where we're doing a lot of aggression. And so in this instance, you obviously want to try to make that as effective as possible. So here we're checking the stone. We can see the opponent has not gathered more than 900 stone uh, down to uh, more than that 900 stone mark. And so you know that it's only going to be um, two town centers. If it was more than that, then I think that's like 17, 690 or something. I'm not quite sure. Um, then you would be uh, aware that it's going to be three town centers. We're sending our scholars out very, very early. And the reason we can do that is because our opponent doesn't really have units yet. So we can afford to send out our scholars uh, a little bit earlier without protection because we know that our opponent's gone greedy. So again, leverage this early time to really get something done early. We're walling in the sacred sites. The reason we're walling in the sacred sites is because camel archers and horsemen are incredibly effective at just running around the map and decapping them. And so we don't need as many units currently. Um, we can actually afford to just go for... Uh, the sacred sites and just wall them in instantly if we were up against a more aggressive approach from our opponent and it was not one two town centers was maybe one town center then walling in the sacred site would not have made as much sense because they're committing to a few lage anyways so that's fine eight minutes in we now have the sacred sites that means at 18 minutes we should have a sacred site victory provided we're not delayed or it's decapped so we've got one victory condition going already as delhi now this is of course unique to delhi but sometimes you'll find that okay um, setting up multiple victory conditions can be a really good idea. Now, a lot of the times people do that and then they don't really commit to anything and then they die because of it. Like, for example, they're going fast castle and second TC. If you do that against Abbasid, you're going to have a rough time. But if you're going one town center, sacred sites, and you're doing aggression at the same time, looking for a timing, then you're going to have a good time because then you've got two victory conditions going. If you don't kill your opponent on your all-in, you still got the sacred sites building in the back. And so that makes a lot of sense. If you're going to go for a fast castle, then grab the relics instead whilst you're doing your damage in that early castle age period of time. So always look for more advantages. Don't just play to one advantage. If there's one very obvious one to go for, go for it. In our base, we're going for a stable. And the reason we're going for a stable is because our opponent went for three archer ranges. So it can make sense to go for it just to force them to make spears. And if they don't make spears, then you have that meat shield going for you with those early horsemen. We're building up archers and spears as well. We're going for another stable because it seems like our opponent's not inclined to make any spears themselves. So right now I'm just massing up as many units as I can. I'm spending everything I've got. And with those units, I'm going to look for a timing. So he's obviously walling the top side. And when he's walling, that sort of signals to me that he is not actually going to commit to the feudal age. He's actually going to stay. Um, he's just going to go for the castle age instead. Which is really good for me because that means I will have a timing where I have the most amount of units and he has the least amount of units is the exact moment where he's clicked up. I can see here that he's aging up. And when you see your opponents going up with the Abbasid, um, you know that they actually still don't have to... Um, they're not like out of the game, right? So when they go for a click up, they can still gather resources. They don't need villagers to age up. And so what I'm trying to point out here is if they're making units, they will continue to do so. You will not necessarily see a complete full stop in unit production. And so it can be a little bit deceptive that when they're aged up, that they actually are able to full produce. So just keep that in mind when you're up against Abbasid, that they are able to continue to make units whilst you are in the fuel age and they're aging up um, because they don't need to spare villagers to age up. So here I know that most of his stuff is pushed towards the left side. I did that by attacking the right side here. And I've just sort of ruined an opening here so it's easier for me to get in. And... Um, it's also a little point of vision here that I can use if he wants to go out and stuff. So this is pretty cool for me. Um, a little smart move if you want to uh, get your feudal age 
a little, little bit cleaner. And then I see the click up. I was going to attack this area anyways, but now I know that I have to commit to it. Because he clicked up to the Castle Age, I know that, hey, he's going to have the least amount of units right now. Now, he can, he can actually get armored units out if he's made barracks and stuff. But I have my Gauss Raiders, I have my Mars, so as long as I get as much damage as done as possible, then it's going to be a good time. We're going to turn on the caster mode here so we can see how many villager kills are gotten, because this is sort of when things snowball. I have to kill as many villagers as possible. Gauss Raiders on top of the archers. Archers are just kiting, spears are A-moved, so there's not a lot more to it. The thing that's really cool when you play against somebody who's gone castle is, a lot of the times, you can counter most of the units with your fuel age units. Spears will counter any cavalry, so that's knights, that's uh, horsemen, uh, camel riders, camel archers. You have your archers that will counter the camel uh, archers, they will counter crossbows and whatever. You have your spears, uh, so your ghastly raiders that will counter men at arms and other armored units. And so in these early stages, before they get like 10 men at arms, when they have like just a couple, you're usually going to have a good time when you have a good mass like this. Right, we are 10 villager kills. This is really good. We're doing a lot of damage and we're just continuing to look, in, look for it. We are definitely looking to take out the enemy's army before it gets upgraded. But at the same time, we need to balance that with killing villagers. So at this stage, we have equalized. We have the same amount of eco. We actually have more because of sacred sites and a few extra villagers. And so this is a great stage uh, for us to be in. Even if we were pushed out of the base, we would be able to go castle age from here on out. We would also be able to go into ramps, but I would definitely suggest you go castle age after you've done the damage. Don't lose all your army. Just go castle age from here on out and you're going to feel great. The next game we're going to take a look at is going to be um, a Ayubet versus Abbasid. And we're going to see how to deal with the camel archers. This next game that I'm going to show you is going to be Ayubits. So Ayubits usually like to go for fast castle, and I think this is again one of those matchups where that is really good. Um, you are able to do so a lot of the times when you're up against Abbasid, because Abbasid, whilst they can go for military wing, uh, they can also go for eco wing, they can choose to play it out a bit more greedy. But usually, early on, you're going to have a good time versus Abbasid because they can't apply as much pressure as they want to due to the fact that they're going to go for second town centers. So when you're playing fast castle civs, when you're playing these early feudal age aggression civs, don't be afraid to just greed it out a bit. Make sure that you're not going to die to two spears and two archers from the military wing. But then after that, just know that you have some time to actually get up to next age. The thing that's rough with Abbasid that a lot of people struggle with is the Abbasid player can afford to stay in Feudal Age for a very, very long time. With their camel archers, with their really good spears, they don't need to go up as quickly. And so if you are going fast castle, don't just think you've won the game. You've never just won the game when you go up against Abbasid and you've gone Castle Age because they can afford to stay in Feudal for longer. They have their victory condition, which is the second TC. So uh, opening up with Gulams might be good initially. You have to have a good follow-up. That might be Archers. That will be able to deal with something like Camel Archers. But if you don't have a follow-up planned, you might just lose because, hey, their economy is going to continue to bloom and you're going to be faced with Camel Archers and they kill pretty much any armor unit that you can throw at them. So whether you play Camel Ancestors and Archers or Gulam Archer, as long as you can maintain somewhat control in the game, that's going to feel great. All right. So in this game, I got a lot of sheep. I got a really, really good amount of sheep. And this is important because if you have a lot of sheep, then what you can do is you can start to sort of assess what is the opponent's position in terms of food, because then it's going to come quite early that they're not going to have a lot of food left. Now, in this map, Rocky River, there's obviously a lot of sheep. He has 12 sheep here. We have our 23 sheep or something here. So it's not like he's going to be out of food at minute 8, but maybe at minute 12 or minute 14. That's when your opponent's going to start to run out of food, and that's where you actually have a timing. That's when the opponent has to make farms. That's when the opponent goes out on the map. That's where you strike. So even if you're playing something like Fuel Age Aggression here, we're not going to do that. But if, even if you were playing something like Fuel Age Aggression, and you're not quite sure if you could find the damage you need, then you know that there will be a time later on where you will be able to. And that's really good for you. All right, so here we are opened up with uh, a few horsemen, which is a good thing to do if you're playing as the Ayubid, because it can really put some pressure on, force uh, early spears and stuff, and force them to stay in fuel for longer. And so these early two horsemen have a massive impact in the sense that they force our opponent to stay in feudal for a longer time. And that's good for us when we want to build up for our timing. So here my plan is to go Gulams, but I don't want to go Gulams just straight up, because he's going to see that and he's going to be like, okay, well, I'm just going to go Camel Arches. It's better to have Gulams if your opponent already has units that are countered by them. And so opening up with a few horsemen, being able to deny vision from the scout, 
that's a really strong move because you're essentially building up to that Ghulam timing instead of just saying, oh, I'm just going to go Ghulams. Then we're aging up very quickly here. We're getting our barracks set up. And again, this is quite a simple strategy. Um, we're just trying to dictate what our opponent does and then we counter what they're doing. We get our blacksmith going, we're going to get our ranged armor and then we just try to full produce Ghulams out of our barracks. Here we've got three barracks up. And we kind of know that our opponent is going to play a little bit longer Feudal Age. He's got the tower up in gold, which is good. He's got the barracks, which is really good for us as well. And now we can just start to pump these Ghulams up against our opponent. We've macroed accordingly as well. And so we've just gotten the ranged armor. And we're going to get the second ranged armor afterwards. The reason that's important is because towers and TCs do way more damage than archers and stuff. And so you really benefit a lot from having a lot of ranged armor up against these types of defenses. So... Opponent obviously gathering a lot of gold. This is a really good for us because that means that, yeah, he could go for something like upgrades and stuff. But right now he's faced with um, full gold denial. And so even if he clicked up, he would not be able to produce anything out of those uh, castle age production buildings. So and now he has to go into camel archers. And this is where a lot of people struggle. The camel archers is a problem because they have a really high base damage of 12. They can be upgraded. They only cost food, really. And it's quite easy for Abbasid to start doing something like... Uh, farms. So when you see the camel archers are starting to be massed, and there will be a lot of camel archers in this game because of the Ghulams, then you can start to go into archers. So what's happening in my base right now is, all right, well, we're actually going to start researching Steeled Arrow. We're going to get into better archers, and then we're going to have three to four archer engines just full pumping archers. The Ghulams are still going to try to find idle time. They're still looking to find damage, and you still need them, but... In the end, you're going to be faced with Camel Archers and you will never win against that if you only have Ghulams or Spears because you can just kite with them. That's what they're good at. They kite insanely well. They're exceptional at base defense and just dealing with Castle Age opponents who are doing something like Knights or Ghulams. So what you have to do is follow up with the Archer play. Don't do Spears, follow up with the Archers. You will never get close to the Camel Archers anyways. And if you do, good for you, but it's not going to work when you get better. So, Archers... There you go. Get the upgrades going. I've got one ranged armor. I'm going to get my uh, Sultan's Mamluks for extra attack speed. And then I'm just trying to mass up units here. Back and forth, back and forth. Just trying to force my opponent to make more and more units. So you can see he has a lot of camel archers. 12 camel archers is a lot. They cost quite a lot. And so you know that if your opponent is full producing camel archers, that they're spending a lot of food on not aging up but on units instead. So as long as you know that you have the initiative to go and do some damage, if you can control the Camel Archer mass, then you're going to be absolutely fine um, just keeping this up because they will have to. If they stop making Camel Archers now, they lose. They're kind of on a never-ending spiral of having to make Camel Archers, otherwise they're just going to lose out in this game. The Camel Archers do perform well against the Archers. You're, you have to micro and kill the low health ones. Then get your Ghulams in and not lose your archers. You need a good archer mass to be able to deal with this. Remember, you're also playing very static units, so moving around in the map is quite hard. Camel archers are really good at cutting you off as well. He could be going here and doing some damage to the units in between, and then I would have to group up my units more before I move out. And so that's really important to remember as well. That they have that mobility factor, and you don't. And so you have to be in their face as much as you can. Archers... You're starting to get that mass up and running, just looking for that damage. Again, I can kill five villagers and it's not going to make a big difference, but what I definitely need to is to keep him in Feudal Age. As long as he's staying in Feudal Age and making farms and all these things, the better for me. Alright, so we can see that he's definitely wanted to go Castle Age and we can read that based off of the gold that he has here. But we're also reaching a pretty good mass of archers, and so his Camel Archers are not going to be able to deal with that. Archers is king in this matchup, especially if they're veterancy and in castellation stuff. But even if they aren't, they're going to be the counter to Camel Archers nonetheless. Alright, so we're going to keep going a little bit here. Just trying to find some damage. Again, the Archers kind of die easily to Town Centers and TC, sorry, uh, Towers. And so just trying to lose too much. But again, you also want to find damage. So it's a balance. Keep that, you know, going as well as you can. Um, yeah, again, if you have the map control, really good for you. You can build towers out here if you're kind of struggling with map control, just to defend against the camel archers that might be roaming around on the map. Usually they're also paired up with horsemen. I would say in that situation, just add a few spears, add a little bit of everything, right? Again, just archers, ghulams, one ram to take out the second TC, and then I'm just looking to find more and more damage. I already have all the upgrades that I need for my units, and so even if he goes for armored units at this stage, they're gonna die pretty easily. 
So again, the game is over when they are really struggling for resources, when they are doing so many camel archers and you don't die because of it. So they have to get control. If they don't get control because you made archers, then you're going to be absolutely fine. So yeah, that's pretty much it. I hope you guys have enjoyed this little guide talking a little bit about how you can deal with the Abbasid. If you have any questions about how to deal with the Abbasid, uh, ask them in the comment section below. I'll do my best to answer them. Number one thing to take away from this is remember everything has a counter and don't try to outboom the Abbasid because you will lose.